Hello again everyone and welcome back again for another video. What we're going to do today is something kind of fun here. We're going to go back to a topic that I covered uh, last year I believe and that was converting the Acer C740 into Windows 10. Today though we're going to do a, a little bit uh, more than that. We're going to see if we can get Windows 11 on this. Uh, Windows 11 is a little different ball game to be playing with than Windows 10 when it comes to installing on this. But, you know, I've, I've never done it personally on a C740, but uh, something tells me we can. So let's go ahead and try that. So let me cut this scene, and uh, we'll start with the uh, procedure for this, and we'll go over this again. Hopefully this video will be a little bit better than the last one I did, and you can get a little better detail. Hang on. Okay, so I got a little bit of light shining down on here so you can see this. Let me back this up so you can see what this is. I took out the 13 screws, pulled off the back on this uh, so that we can expose the uh, inside here. Now, this one, some tells me it's been uh, opened up before, tampered with. I don't know. It just, it, it, I can't explain it. But uh, anyways, so what we're going to do here before we do anything is we're going to remove this right protect screw right here that's right next to where the uh, speaker plugs in we'll go ahead and take that out we'll stick that in there for now and let me switch off this adjust my microphone sorry and pop this pop this back back on um i actually have a new back for it. it's kind of broke right there but uh yeah i'm just kind of doing all kinds of fixing on this thing today um pop that on real fast and now that we have those out let's go ahead and ooh, make sure it's down first sorry guys all right and there it booted up. Let me adjust this. Take this over here. Oh, let me power this down real quick here. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into recovery mode now. And for that, again, we're going to hit escape, power, and refresh at the same time as we're booting up. Let me, let me go ahead and do that. We'll try that. We'll see if this works. Push the power button. We'll hit escape power refresh. We'll hold it down. Hopefully this works for us. Ah, there we go. Um, you can see right there. You know what? Let's let's try. Let me do something real fast here. I'm not sure if this works unless it's booted up. Let me follow my connections here. Monitor two. There we go. Let me try and plug in an HDMI on the side. And let me check my other monitor real fast here. I want to see if maybe we can do a better display for you guys. Um, nope. Does not look like it's going to output to that monitor. Hold on here. I need to switch it back. So that ain't going to work for us, so we'll unplug that, so I can't show you. Anyways, getting back to what I said here. Uh, one second here. Um, so we hit, uh, go back here, power, escape, and refresh. Uh, as it, it was booting up, and we got this screen right here, it says, Chrome OS is missing or damaged, please insert a recovery USB stick or SD card. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to put this into developer mode. And to put that into developer mode, we're going to go right down here, and we're going to hit Control and D. Control D, see? And now on the screen it says, turn OS verification off, press Enter. Your system will reboot, and local data will be cleared. To go back, press Escape. So we're going to hit, go ahead here and press Enter. Now this thing should reboot. We'll let you watch this happening as it's going on here. Got to give it just a moment. Let's see if I can raise that up. 
There you go. You hear that beep? Now it should reboot again. There we go. Now what it's going to do, you should get a prompt because it says your system is transitioning to developer mode. Local data has been cleared. Modifications you make to the system are not supported by Google. May cause hardware issues and may void warranty. To cancel, turn your computer off now. Um, now this is a 30 second delay. It gives you time to uh, back out of this in case you accidentally had hit this and, and accidentally went into uh, this mode. Um, this gives you a chance to back out of it and go, whoa, hey, you know what am I doing here? And uh, here, let me tighten this up just a little bit here. Dang camera mount. Um, so now what it's going to do is it's going to transition into developer mode. And right over here in the corner, I think we can get a close-up of that. It'll show you like a little percentage of uh, progress that it's going to take right there. Now, let's go ahead and cut this scene here so we're not uh, racing, uh, wasting precious screen time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up, and then uh, we'll come back when it gets to 100%. Okay. Now we're right at 99% there. It's just about to hit 100, so we can carry on with what we were doing. Um, after this does this, this is actually going to do a reboot. Now, at, at this point, what I would recommend you do um, is have uh, a keyboard and mouse handy. Um, you're going to need one of those. Um, one of these works too. This is what I like to use. This is a Logitech K400. These are nice. This has got a uh, integrated keyboard and touchpad that we can use. And uh, another thing we could use here, which is actually what I'm using today, is this adapter right here. This is a Smaze uh, brand adapter. It actually has three USB on the side plus a network right here for... Uh, network connectivity and this would plug into the USB port right here and we'll go ahead and plug that in and while I'm on a plug-in spree here let's find let's go ahead and plug the power in <laughs> too so we're not on battery um, second here there we go all right, let's see what this is doing. Oh, it's still dicking around here. But we are all set up. Um, I'm going to use my KVM. Like I said, you'll want to have a keyboard and mouse or something like this. Or a KVM with something like this. Or something. Just because when we get going here, we're actually not going to have... Our touchpad's not going to work. Our keyboard's not going to work. Um... So we're gonna we're gonna be flying blind into this as we do this. So we we really don't want to uh, do it without the keyboard and mouse. This ain't gonna work out too well here. Uh, looks like it's got about a minute and fifty seconds to go. I'm not gonna waste your guys' time. Let me let me cut this scene here and we'll come back. One second. Sorry about that. Okay, we got a few seconds left to go in this. As you can see, we're down to uh, you know eight seconds. And we should be able to continue on from where we started. And we'll let this finish up here. Let me go ahead and switch my keyboard over. Okay. Just eat us. All right. Now that it's done that, it's going to go back to this screen here. And you just want to give it about, oh, 10, 15, 20 seconds or so. And you should be hearing a beep. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to let it sit there for a minute or so. Let it uh, sulk over. There we go. Did you hear that beep? All right. So now <clears throat> it should boot uh, to the Chrome OS startup screen here. There we go. There it's going. Mm -hmm. Give it a minute. Okay, now we have our prompt there. It says, welcome to Chrome OS. Oh, good, my uh, mouse is working over here. Let's go ahead and click the get started button here so we can get started. Uh, first of all, we have to connect to the internet. Um, we'll connect to the hamster net here. One second here, let me put in the password. Oh, 
Okay, we're connected to the internet now. Um, we'll uncheck this optional shit here and agree and continue. And it's going to determine device configuration. We'll just give that another minute or so here. See if I can get this screen a little, little better there for you there. Yeah, it kind of sucks because the screen on this kind of sucks. Okay, now it's going to ask us who's using the Chromebook is it for you or for a kid or somebody else. Now, we're not going to worry about that. We're actually going to go right down here in the corner. See where it says browse as a guest and we're going to go ahead and click browse as guest. And now, as you can see, it says, you know, you're browsing as a guest. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to push control alt and t just like that control alt t and what that does is this gives us a little terminal shell here now now that we're in this what we can do is we can type in shell s h oops h e l l all right now we can go to mr chromebox's website here and let me i have this written down here one second here um okay there it is let me go back here one second sorry guys all right now that we're in a shell we can go ahead and type the commands and i'm gonna set my camera there hopefully you can see this we're gonna type in cd semicolon curl space minus capital L, capital O, and then HTTPS, semicolon, for, forward slash, or is it colon, whatever, forward slash, I'm sorry, Mr. Chromebox dot tech, uh, I can't say I gotta turn my head here a little bit, I got my camera in the way of my screen there so I can see what I'm typing here, I just to see the curl tech um forward slash firmware dash util dot sh space and and did i get that oops oh, there we go yep and and uh pseudo bash firmware dash util dot sh all right so let's hit enter let's see what happens here cannot resolve miss oh yeah i spelled it wrong ms chromebox oh, one second here guys i put ms chromebox m r mr chromebox there we go now let's try it there we go Downloading, supporting files, getting device system info. Whew. Okay, now this is where we get to the part again where we are going to flash the new firmware on there and make this into a UEFI BIOS. Um, what we're going to choose is we're going to install option 2 here which is install update UEFI full ROM firmware. So uh, so we're going to choose our option here to hit enter and I'll read this to you last time I kind of skimmed through it but I want you to see what it says here so that you know what you're getting into it says important flashing the firmware has the potential to brick your device requiring relatively inexpensive hardware and some technical knowledge to recover not all boards can be tested prior to release and even then slight differences in hardware can lead to unforeseen failures if you don't have the ability to recover from a bad flash you're taking a risk you have been warned also flashing full rom firmware will remove your ability to run chrome os do you wish to continue now um when you run the full of course it goes to total uefi now you could also put in the legacy firmware as well and uh kind of do a dual boot there even a triple boot if you want to go mac os or something but uh we're going to do full uefi on this one so i'm going to push yes to continue 
And uh, I think it's going to give us another warning. I haven't done this in a while. Yep, it says, Note, after flashing UEFI firmware, you will need to install a UEFI compatible OS. Chrome OS will no longer be bootable. See HTTPS, blah, 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 blah. Uh, press Y to continue or any other key to abort. So we're going to go ahead and press Y there and continue. <clears throat> Create a backup copy of your stock firmware. Now, this would be a good idea to do if um, you're worried about maybe screwing this up and maybe, you know, just totally bricking this thing, which can happen. It, 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 it does happen, it, you know. Uh, if you're worried about something like that, it would probably be a good idea to um, do a backup. And uh, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, yeah, I mean, the recovery on it's not too hard to do i'm not going to get into that but i i would really really honestly recommend that you do make a backup now i'm personally not going to do a backup because i'm not worried about it i have several chromebooks i break this one i don't care but uh let's see now okay create a backup copy i'm going to push no in for no hit enter and now what it's doing is it is downloading the um firmware rom and it's going to install right here it says installing full, full rom firmware may take up to 90 seconds <clears throat> so we'll give that a little bit of time here okay it's done uh press enter to return to the main menu uh, okay, it says important. The first boot after flashing may take substantially longer than subsequent boots, up to 30 seconds or more. Be patient, and eventually your device will boot. So remember that. So we got to give it a little bit of time after we do a reboot here, but we should get something. Let's go ahead and press enter here. Now, as you can see, we're back at the main menu. Now, what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me is uh, we're going to reboot this thing. So we're going to push R on here to choose the reboot. And let's go ahead and reboot this and let's watch what happens. And I'll guide you through this uh, as we get there. Hopefully it, it doesn't take as long as they said it would, but uh, you, you never know. We'll see. It, it all depends on the laptop and all depends on the uh, hardware that's in there and stuff usually. There we go. And there's our bunny rabbit. And that's what we wanted to see. And you can see it says it's booting from the SATA Kingston blah, 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 failed. Um, now, <clears throat> that's because it doesn't have a uh, UEFI OS on it now. It, it still has Chrome OS on there. So, of course, that is not going to boot. Um, now, of course, it says, you know, press any key to continue booting. And what happens is you get all that. Now, what we can do here... Uh, let me Ooh, pull this out. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I had to pull out my USB thing here. Um, I got a Windows 10 21 H2 uh, USB stick in here. We can go ahead and stick that in here now. Um, I have it there on the side. Now, if we want to get to this uh, to work on this uh and boot from it um this is pretty easy when you're in a shell here like this all you have to do is just type in exit e x i t exit and that should there we go goes to the uh boot manager so what we can do now uh do i have my keyboard switched over no i don't um we can go to the boot menu and we can choose general usb flash disk press enter and this should now boot to on our windows 10. let's try this real quick just to see if the boot thing's coming up here give it just one minute Oh, there it goes. All right, so now you know that it's going to do the Windows 10 install. You can see the little little thing there turning. Now, this is only a 16 gig um, 
M.2 that's on here, a little SSD that's on here. So obviously there's not enough space for uh, Windows 10. Now you could, I, I would say if you're going to put a new one in here, you're going to have to put a new uh, M.2 in here, a little 2242. Um, I'd, I'd go with something like at, at minimum, minimum 64 gigs. You could probably squeak by with a 32 but, um, I mean, you're, you're just going to be so tight on space and what have you I, that I wouldn't even dick around with it. I would just stick with a 64 or higher, maybe even a 128. Uh, myself, personally, in this one, uh, I'm going to put a 256 in it. But uh, we are at that. Now, one thing that uh, I, I would encourage you to do, um, and let's uh, let's take this, flip this around real fast so you can see this here. And I'll do it later. But uh, one thing I would encourage you to do on that 16 gig um, one that comes with it is install Linux on it, actually. Um, there's plenty of room on it for Linux, and Linux should work just fine on here. Now, on the previous video I did, I showed that running Linux. Um <clears throat> so that's actually what I'm going to do before I continue on here with this. Uh, I'm going to cut this scene and do it so I don't bore you. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, Linux boot uh, USB stick and stick that into the uh, thing over there. And I'm going to go ahead and install Linux on this 16 gig. Now, why am I doing that even though I'm going to use Windows on this? Um, mainly as a backup. Uh, in case the M.2 ever goes bad or something like that, or the operating system's corrupt, or, or you, you never know. Um, you know, it's, it's a little 16 gig. It's just going to go to waste anyways. It's just going to be sitting on my shelf if I don't do something with it. So I'm going to at least put Linux on it so that there is an operating system on it. So maybe if I want to sell this laptop even, and uh, maybe I don't want to sell it with the Windows on there, or, or you know, I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and install Linux on this real fast. And then we'll come back and we'll continue on with uh, Windows 11 and Windows 10. See you in a sec. Okay, I got this flipped around and I went ahead and turned on the overhead light here so we can have a good look at it. Um, right over here in the corner is where our M.2 is. Let me go ahead and pull this out. Do I have the right size screwdriver tip? Probably not. Let me switch this real fast here. There we go. All right. Screw that. <laughs> I dropped my screw. All right. Set that right here. Here's our new one. Come on out of there. And we can go ahead and slip that in there, just like that. And screw it down. This sucks doing too because the screws are so tiny. All right, so while I have this open, um. I'm going to do something else to it, too. I'm going to actually go ahead here and let me get one of my plastic things. I'm going to unplug this battery and I'm going to take it out. Because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Um, again, I mean, look at this. There's only one screw holding this in. I know. I, I, I let, let me back up here a second. I got this uh, Chromebook off of eBay. I, I I bought several of them because I mean you can get them so cheap. Um, but like I said, I know for a fact somebody opened this one up. I know they did. Um, look at this battery. It's kind of beat up there. Yeah, this is. Uh, yep. All right. Anyway, so that battery's out. Uh, I got a new one right here. You can get these for about 20 bucks. Totally worth it. I mean, considering you can get these Chromebooks off of eBay for, you know, 50 bucks or less, um, I think it really, uh, you know, no big deal to go out and spend another 20 bucks and buy a replacement battery for it, you know. Um, we'll go ahead, plug that in. Hopefully got this the right way. 
yeah. Trying to do this with the camera in front of me there. It's not too easy. All right. There we go. Batteries there. We'll set that right. Oops. Lock it in place like it's supposed to be here. And we'll put this screw in. in there <laughs> stupid thing all right there we tighten down all right new battery is in so we have everything that we need to do on this side done and we can go ahead actually if we want to and put our screws back in I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna put in one screw up here though I know this uh, top corner over here is a little loose so I'm gonna go ahead and pop one screw in for now all right and it should auto power on maybe if we're lucky if we have it plugged in right no, nothing. All right, hold on. I got to tear it apart again. Let me cut this scene here. I'm going to fiddle with this to get this powered on. One second. Okay, now we can get back to installing Windows on this. Um, we're going to start with Windows 10 first of all. Uh, let me switch my keyboard here. Second. Go ahead and click next. Install now. Mm-hmm. All right, now on your Activate Windows screen, um, you can of course buy a Windows 10 key. You can get those actually pretty cheap online. Um, I tend to do it another way when it comes to like older hardware like this. Um, I like using Windows 7 keys. Um, Windows 7 Pro you can get probably cheaper than you can get Windows 10 and the keys work just the same um, to prove that let me let me go up here so that you're um so that's out of the screen a little bit here so you don't see me oop, type in my key and let me set that over there and let me go ahead and type in um, a Windows 7 key that I uh, purchased in a second here Oops. Q. I got that all typed in there. Go ahead and click next. <clears throat> One second. It's got to think for a minute. <laughs> That's the thing about these uh, older machines, like the little little bit slower on the uh, response time when you're doing stuff. But you know, that's the way it is. Come on, there we go. I can back that off so you can see that. All right, now go ahead and accept the license. Next, and we will uh, go ahead and do our windows install now you can see drive zero on allocated space that's where we're going to install to that's our new drive you can say i put a 256 in there um not going to bore you with the windows installation i just wanted to talk about activation um we'll uh see if it's activated when we uh finish up here let me let me let this finish installing here i'm going to cut this scene we'll come back and we'll look at windows 10 real fast 
Okay, our Windows 10 install is done, and as you can see right here, I don't know if we can see this on the screen or not, touchpad is working, keyboard is also working. Uh, also, just to show you this real fast here, let's go under settings. Settings, there we go. And go to system and about. <clears throat> and as you can see, we have Windows 10 Pro on here uh, activated, of course. And like I said, I used a, uh, it's doing some driver updates. Uh, I used a Windows 7 uh, Pro key on this for Windows 10 Pro. So if uh, this Windows 11 install isn't successful, at least we know that Windows 10 is uh, a definitely a go. So let's find out now if Windows 11 is going to be a go. Uh, like I said, Windows 11 is a little bit uh, of a different animal than Windows 10 is was when it comes to installing on something this old. So let me go to the screen over here and let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. To install Windows 11 on an older device like this, uh, we need to get rid of the TPM requirement and other security protocols that are in there. And there's also a requirement of 8 gigs of RAM or more that Windows 11 has. And in order to do that, we're going to use two different things. We're going to use <coughs> the Windows 11 ISO, which you can get from uh, you know the Windows uh, Media Creation Tool. You can create an ISO right there using that. Just create a regular Windows 11 installs all you got to do. And then uh, we're going to use the newest version of Rufus. So let's go ahead and fire up Rufus here so you could have a look at this. Now, <clears throat> what we're, we have our uh, I have a 16 gig drive off to the side there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select our image here and I have that under Windows 11, the Windows ISO. And then right below that where it says image option uh, you can see it says standard Windows 11 installation, TPM 2.0, secure boot, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to drop that down and we're going to choose extended Windows 11 installation. And go ahead and press start there and let that finish up and uh, make that USB bootable thing for you. And then what we should have is uh, <clears throat> the Windows 11 uh install media without the TPM and the secure boot and the 8 gig requirements on it. So I uh, went ahead and made that. Let me let me take that out of my uh, drive thing here one second. And uh, let's go back to the uh, other machine over here and uh, let's see if we can install Windows 11. Okay, so I got the Windows 11 uh, USB stick in here now, so we can check this out real quick here. Let me let me see if we can do this without having to reboot. We'll go to the F drive here under EFI, see if it gives us an option. Nope, it sure doesn't. Huh, okay, so we're going to have to do this the uh, other way. So let me power this down real fast here. it on again we're gonna spam the uh, escape key here to get back to the boot menu hopefully this works there we go boot menu and we're gonna choose the USB flash disk now I don't think since I've already activated this with Windows uh, 10 that I'll need to re-enter the key. I'm pretty sure I could just say I don't have a key and I'm pretty sure it'll still activate for me um, when I'm finished. I guess we'll find out here. There we go. It's booting. <clears throat> Seemed like that was a little bit faster than what Windows uh, 10 was. But anyways, let's see next. 
install now so slow activate windows let's see I'll just click I don't have a product key Windows 11 Pro should be next accept the agreement custom install now here's where our partitions were what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete all those partitions and completely wipe out Windows 10 here uh, no big deal you know if this uh, doesn't work out for me I could just reinstall Windows 10 give me something to do tonight all right so we have uh, drive zero has 238 gigs of uh, unallocated space here it is completely clean let's go ahead and click next and do our Windows 11 uh, install here now I'm not gonna bore you with this uh, like I uh, said with the Windows 10 install I'm gonna go ahead and let these files copy over and we will let Windows 11 install and we will see how this turns out see you in a minute Okay, it took like about 15 minutes or so, a little little slow, but looks like we are rocking along here. We can go ahead now and uh, set up uh, everything as we're going along. Let's see how this works out. Well, what I'm really eager to know is if this uh, if this is activated. I'm I'm pretty sure it is, um, but you never can tell. Is the Nope, touchpad's not working, so we'll have to do something with that. Uh, connect you to a network. I uh, don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. Oops. Try that again. Acer. Uh, we'll skip that. Let's see. Location, yes. Find my device, yes. We'll uncheck all the rest of this crap. Except. Like I said, I mean, so far so good. Um, the only thing that I noticed is the uh, touchpad's not working. Don't know if the keyboard's working. I haven't tested that yet, but we'll see. Um, like you know, like I said earlier, that's why it's a good idea to uh, have a uh, spare keyboard and mouse, or I'll say uh, K400 like this. Uh, they got the K400M, which is a little more advanced, made for. Uh, HTPCs that'll work too. Um, there's also those little mini keyboards with the touch pads on them. Um, or else, you know, optionally, you got your KVM. KVMs are fine, but remember, there's only two USB slots on the uh, Chromebook here. So if you want to put in your USB stick plus keyboard and mouse, you'll definitely want to have a little hub connected to it or something there. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, Let's uh, see here. Please keep your PC on and plugged in. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and if you hadn't noticed, I'm kind of babbling here so I can kill time. So this will finish up a little slow. Um, tell you what, I'm not going to bore you. Let me stop this until it actually finally boots into the Windows screen there. And uh, then we'll take a look at it from there. Okay, finally. Now we're on the Windows screen. So as you can see, it did work. So, uh, what do we do here? Uh, settings. We'll just go to uh, system about. And let's see, processor, related length, no specification. Yep, it is absolutely uh, activated, people. Windows 11 Pro 21H2. There you see it. Um, so, 
yeah, this absolutely works on an Acer C740. Uh, let's check out, let me do something real quick here. All apps will need our da, 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 notepad, and we will, oh, it's already on the start, duh. Okay, let's go back up here a second and see where it's at. Where's my notepad? Uh, we'll just type it. <clears throat> let's try out our keyboard. Oh, yep, the keyboard works. Um, I think we'll do, we will have to use the remap utility, though. I'm not sure how these will map. Uh, let's see. Tab, tab, tab. It does that. Uh, that's the search function. Let's see. Shift. Oops, hold on. Shift. Yep, that's capital, control, alt. Yep. <clears throat> so I, I will have to and probably install the keyboard remap utility, like I said. But uh, let's see if we can get this touchpad driver working here. And I suppose what we will have to do here, tell you what, before I do that, let me see, let me switch my keyboard here real fast. See if I can do something here. That's kind of a pain in the ass to look at, isn't it? Um, there we go. All right, one second. Let me stop this scene, and we'll switch over to the other one. Okay, that's better. <laughs> now we're over here on uh, this screen here. Let me go ahead and switch back the keyboard here. So I got my mouse. Uh, let's complete setup on Edge. Let's see. Confirm. Continue without signing in. We'll close this crap up. You are not connected. All right, so I should be able to... Uh, one second here plug in my thing here we should have a network yep there we go we have network oh so let's go to coolstar.org again under chromebooks and install Acer uh, 3205U. That's the CPU that's inside this C740. There we go. Rapid storage technology. What this is is the uh, Intel management interface. Let's download. The that let that download and then let's see keyboard remap utility we'll download that and touchpad driver we will download that. Okay, so keep this one, show more, keep anyway. Hate this new security crap they do here. You have to go through this extra bullshit here just to keep the stuff that you downloaded. Show more, keep anyway. There we go. Our files are all downloaded now, and they should be in the downloads folder. There they are. We'll extract all these. Now you'll, you're going to have to do a manual install on these. And I think it's under the RST drivers. Yeah. Do I have to extract that? Yep, I do. So let's extract all there. Okay, drivers, production, Windows 10 X64 is probably the ones we're going to need here. So let's go ahead and right click on the setup information file here. Right click, show more options, install that. And 
then this one, show more options, install this one. Okay, those are now installed. Now our touchpad drivers, let's take a look at this one, see if this one will work. And let's check this out here. Uh, yep, touchpad's working just fine. Cool. All right. So the last thing to install would be our keyboard remap utility. And I think we're done. <laughs> let's, uh, let's change this display. Make sure this is uh, activated here. <clears throat> we'll change it to something cool. Like this. There we go. All right. So you know, like I said, uh, it it works fine. Uh, we got Windows 11 running on this uh, Chromebook now. Uh, Acer C740. It's got you know four gigs of RAM in it. Let's uh, let's do this real quick here. We can right click on our Start menu here and actually go to the Task Manager here and uh, take a look at this. More details performance CPU Intel Celeron 3205U at 1.5 gigahertz um, memory 4 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 and SSD is a dogfish 256 gig Ethernet's fine and it looks like our volume is also working yes it is a little slow on the response uh, let's see if our screen brightness works. No, our screen brightness doesn't work. I'm pretty sure that's a driver issue. Um, what just happened? It just went black. Maybe it was because I was trying to dim the screen. I don't know. Try that again. See if that happens again. Oh, nope. See, it went black. So, yeah, that's, that's probably a driver issue. I'll have to sort that out. Uh, get that figured out. But all in all, um, it looks like Windows 11 is a success on an Acer Chromebook. Um, pretty neat. <laughs> pretty neat. So, I, like I said, I have another Chrome. I have a couple more of these actually over there on the shelf that uh, I'm going to also convert to Windows 11. Uh, and then I'll probably sell them off really cheap to somebody. Well, like I said, you know, I got them pretty cheap. You can get these on eBay. About 50 bucks, maybe less. Uh, look around. Don't pay more than 50. If the, if it's more than that, I, if it's too much more than that, I, I would just kind of skip that and wait it out. But um, you, you shop around, kind of bargain shop, <clears throat> put a little bit of effort into it. Maybe even buy like another, you know, M.2 to go with it, a little, you know, SATA M.2, like 128 gig, 64 gig or whatever. They're cheap. But, you know, I mean, for under 100 bucks, um, for under 75 bucks, really, uh, you got yourself a nice little laptop here. Um, one of the disadvantages is it doesn't have the same keys that a regular keyboard would have because it's Chromebook. It's got the Chromebook keys. That's why you got to kind of use that remapper on it uh, to get most of the functionality out of it. But, I mean, you can always plug a, a, a secondary keyboard into the side, you know, if, if you want to do it that way, if you must have some of these extra commands and stuff. But for, like, basic typing and stuff, uh, it, it really shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, let's go over here. So I think what's doing, it's doing all this updating right now. For basic typing, let's just QAZ. I mean, yeah. It, it works just fine. So, yeah, for general surfing, general use, which is probably what you'll want to be using this for anyways. I, I really can't see someone doing gaming on a uh, <laughs> N3205 uh, or a 3205U uh, Celeron chip. I mean, I suppose you could probably do some of the... Uh, the weaker emulation on it, and it would probably run just fine, but um, 
yeah, I don't expect any gaming. <laughs> it's just a nice little little uh, carry around laptop, you know, a little 11.6 inch screen, nice and portable. Uh, good little thing to have, and uh, I, I really encourage uh, you guys to try this out. Um, if if you're you know a little apprehensive, you know, watch my video again. You know, I, I my my uh, articulation kind of sucks, but watch it again. Watch my other video. I did another one too uh, with Windows 10 where I did the exact same thing. You can see that video up over here in that corner. Uh, check that out if you want, and uh, you know, it, you you can pretty much run you know Windows 11, Windows 10 and Linux on this Chromebook. Now, like I said, if you install like the legacy thing, you can more than likely do like a double boot, triple boot, even install Mac OS on here, uh, whatever. But uh, if Windows 11 is something that interests you on a C740 and uh, or in general, and you're, you're looking for like a cheap laptop, then yeah, this is a great, great deal for you. Uh, like I said, 50 bucks, maybe, maybe less. You know, look around. Look around on eBay. Um, we can actually, if you want, let's don't save that. Let's actually, since we have the browser here, we'll actually go to eBay. And we'll just type in Acer C740. And buy it now. Shipping lowest first. That's usually how I sort them. And be careful what you're looking for here. Now you're looking for the uh, Intel Celeron um, N32 uh, was it the 3205U CPU on here. And this is usually your model. The C740-C4PE is usually what you want to get. Um, you can see this one's going for 23. Don't know what it's like on here. This one's for 37 with free shipping. Um, I'm not going to look at these closer. You'll have to do that yourself. I'm just kind of showing you some examples here. But, yeah, you get one with 4 gigs in it that's got that 3205. This one here, like this one right here says it's got the 3215U. Now, they did make some with the 3215U, but it's really kind of rare that you're going to find one of those. If you do, that's awesome. You know, that's that's nice. That's got a little bit more uh, CPU oomph in it than what the regular one does. But you know, typically something like this. Here's one for 44 bucks. Uh, you know, like I said, invest 75 bucks. You can go over to like you know Newegg, and uh, we can price this out for you, so I can give you all a, a nice little rundown here, so you can see what, what kind of money you're talking here. Oh, uh, let's see. It's a little slow though. Let's see. Processors. Let's see. What the hell is it under? Oh, storage drives. Hard drive. SSDs. Duh. Okay. Oops. Clicked the wrong one. If I maybe learn how to click. I mean, and then, like I said, this it's a, a little slow. That's one of the disadvantages. You know, it, it's not going to be super, super fast. It's, it's, if anything, it's, it's kind of uh, gimmicky. I guess maybe that's the word uh, when it comes to running Windows 11 or Windows 10 on this. Uh, Linux, I think, runs fantastic on here. Um, that's actually my choice. Now, what we're looking for is the form factor. M.2 2242. Oops. Apply. And you're talking like 120 gigs. Apply. And we also got to make sure we're on a SATA interface here, not SATA NGFF. Okay. SATA 3. Sort. 
sort by lowest price. And it looks like, come on, $24.99, say? Um, you know, shop around, you know, check Amazon too, you know, check eBay maybe. But, you know, that that's for 120, that's for 120 gig. Um, there, there's 128 gigs out there too. I just don't see anything listed right here. But, yeah, check around, like I said, 75 bucks or so. You can have yourself a... Uh, well, pretty cheap Windows 11 or Windows 10, whichever you choose to do, laptop. And like I said, when it comes to activating, um, I use a Windows 7 Pro key, and you can purchase those most anywhere. <laughs> you know, you can get them real cheap. I think I only paid like $4 and something for it, which is a hell of a lot better than regular price for uh, Windows. But anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, we got a couple more... Uh, Computer builds coming up next. Uh, I got one that actually I've I've been working on for a while. Um, one I've been busy with my job. Two, um, I've been a little sick. Um, I have uh, heart issues and I've been a little sick lately, so I haven't really gotten around to doing some of the things I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm uh, trying to recover here and uh, you know resting up and feeling a little bit better. And uh, so that's why I figured, you know, we'll put out uh, this video. But um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, like I said, I got a couple more builds coming up. We're going to do a gaming PC next, I believe. Uh, not the one that I was working on, but this is going to be actually for somebody else that had purchased one. So I put that one that I was working on on the back burner. I'm in no rush for that one. Like I said, I've been busy, been kind of sick. But uh, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do a nice gaming PC uh in a uh, cougar case actually so i will see you guys all again next time in the next video and thanks for listening to my babbling and hopefully you learned something today that uh will carry over for you so i'll talk to you guys later i will see you in the next video and see you around